Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto gains the Pokemon summoning contract and become Arceus champion. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Somewhere in the land of fire. Deep in the heart of fire country, we find a young man with spiky blonde hair, blue eyes and six whisker marks on his cheeks. He is wearing an eye-gouging orange jumpsuit, goggles on his head, blue ninja sandals and a headband with a leaf symbol carved into it. This young man is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune. Currently Naruto is walking through the forest grumbling about something. Let's listen in, shall we? Kami damn it. Why is it that every time I want to train, I am ignored by my teachers? Yelled out Naruto. You see Naruto is currently on a three-year-long training trip with the Toad Saga Jiraiya in order to get stronger. Unfortunately, Jiraiya has yet to teach Naruto anything useful. So far he has given Naruto complicated materials to work with and no instructions on how to do them. Jiraiya has also used Naruto's hard-earned money to sleep with many women, not that he is successful at it. After two months out of Konoha and Naruto is not getting any stronger, in fact he is getting weaker since Jiraiya doesn't let him train at all. I don't get it. Jiraiya has not taught me anything useful only chakra control and difficult seals. He even has me trying to use Kayubi's chakra, but it hurts when I draw it out. No doubt he is resisting. While well, I am out here doing nothing Sakura and Ino are getting trained by Tsunade Bachin in medical skills and healing techniques. Satsuki and Hinata are being trained by their clans. How am I supposed to protect anyone if I am too weak to protect myself? Asked Naruto no one in particular. Naruto stops and looks up at the sky. He begins to think about what has happened in the last few months. First was Sasuke's attempt to leave Konoha for Orochimaru for power. Naruto and his friends Niji, Choji, Kiba plus Akimaru, Lee and Chunin Shikamaru were sent to retrieve him. Thanks to Naruto they were successful. The team was able to defeat Orochimaru Sound 5 and stop Sasuke from defecting to Sound. Of course, the elders and the civilian council tried to stop Tsunade from punishing Sasuke, but she had help from the clan heads, including Makoto Ichiha Sasuke's mother and the daimyo of Fire Country. Sasuke was imprisoned in the clan compound for three years, with his chakra sealed up tight and could not be trained in any ninja techniques for another four years after that. Naruto was then told about his parents by Tsunade. When he heard that he is the son of the Yandame Hokage Minato Namikaze and Kishina Yuzumaki, he reacted how Tsunade expected. He punched the wall of the Hokage's office. He wanted to know why he wasn't told sooner. Tsunade explained that they made many enemies both in and out of Konoha, so in order to protect him, they had to keep it a secret even from him. At first Naruto was angry, but after claiming down he understood what she meant. Tsunade also told him that both her and Jiraiya are his godparents. When he was told that he gave Tsunade the biggest hug he could muster, then went and kicked Jiraiya so hard in the balls that he was hurt all the way in Iowa. After Naruto was done kicking Jiraiya, Tsunade gave Naruto everything his parents left for him. Their compounds, money, weapons and jutsus. But before he could have access to it, Jiraiya proposed that he take Naruto out of Konoha for training. Tsunade agreed to this only if Jiraiya promised that he would take this seriously. Jiraiya said he would but the result so far says otherwise. Sigh. I don't get it. Why is it that no one wants to train me? Naruto then takes out two sealing scrolls. The scrolls have the symbols of the Uzumaki, Namika's clan symbols. Before he left Naruto did go to both of his parents' compounds and got as much as he could seal away for training. However, he is unable to use any of them due to not being strong enough. Until I gain more strength the jutsus and weapons in these scrolls won't help me. Naruto then puts the scrolls away just as a voice deep inside of him speaks. Tuckle. Oh were you upset that everyone is getting stronger? Said Kayubi. Yes. I am upset. For two months I have been with a super pervert and I am getting weaker. Thought Naruto to the Kayubi. Don't you get it Ninjin. They don't want you to get stronger. They want you to be weak to rely only on my power. Yeah well I don't mind using power from others. But what I want is their permission first. Until then I am basically stealing it and I won't do that. This surprises Kayubi. He truly thought that Naruto would take his power whenever he wanted. Kayubi was about to speak again when Naruto speaks. That is probably why when Jiraiya wants me to access your power it hurts because you are fighting me, right? Yeah. I am fighting you. I really don't like it when someone tries to take my power. I thought so. For what it's worth. I am sorry I tried to take your power. Ayubi thinks about that for a moment. Apology accepted Kit. So, what are you going to do then? I am not ready to let you use my power and that pervert won't help you with anything useful. Honestly. I don't know. I am starting to think that going with Uraya was a waste of time. 
Naruto starts walking further into the forest when he hears a voice. Come. Looking around Naruto sees nothing. Hey, Fox did you hear that? What are you talking about? Asked an annoyed Kayubi. I just heard someone say come. So, you didn't hear anything. Great. My container is going crazy. I am not. Naruto was about to argue with the fox more when. Come Naruto Uzumaki Namikus. Come to me. The voice was louder than before with a feminine sound to it. Okay now I know you heard that. The voice was louder and it said my name. Nope, didn't hear a thing. Ugh. Fine. I will just find it and prove that I am not crazy. Yeah sure. Whatever you say. Kayubi said sarcastically. Damn furball. With that Naruto started walking towards the voice. A few minutes later Naruto was in front of a temple that was falling apart. The voice told him to enter the temple. As Naruto enters, he sees statues of creatures he has never seen. However, in the largest chamber of the temple is a massive statue of a weird-looking deer-like animal. Naruto then sees at the deer's feet is a jewel. The voice tells Naruto to pick up the jewel. As he goes closer Naruto fails to see the statues in the temple begin to glow. Naruto then picks up the jewel. The jewel begins to pulse with energy, and then Naruto blacks out. Unknown place. Naruto is in a massive field with beautiful flowers and a flowing stream. A lush forest and grand mountains in the distance. As Naruto lays in the field a small creature spots him. The creature moves slowly towards him with curiosity in its eyes. When the small creature was close enough it smelled Naruto. The creature then poked him with its tail. Smirking, the creature then sends a small amount of electricity from its cheeks into the downed human. Naruto then jumps up and takes out a kunai ready to attack whoever attacked him. He looks around and sees no one, but then hears a little giggling near him. He turns around and looks down at the giggling animal. What he sees is what looks like a larger than usual yellow mouse with a lightning-shaped tail. Naruto puts the kunai away and walk over to the mouse with a smirk. So, a little prankster huh? Well I guess you don't know who I am do you? He digs through his pocket and takes out a small ball. Hey little guy, want something to eat? The mouse stops giggling and looks at him then the food. Weary it moves slowly to the food, after smelling it the mouse takes it. After eating it all it breaths a sigh of relief. Then its cheeks start to get redder and begins to sweat. It then opens its mouth to let out a torrent of fire. It starts to run around then jumps into a nearby stream to cool off. At this point Naruto is laughing his ass off. Now you know not to prank the prank king of Konoha Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. The mouse then gets out of the stream with a glare. It starts to spark and then. Pick a pick a Pikachu. It shoots out a massive bolt of lightning at Naruto. He then dodges the lightning. The mouse continues for about 5 minutes trying to hit him, but to no avail. After that the little mouse then falls over in exhaustion. Naruto then sees that the mouse creature is down and goes over to it. Sorry little guy, but I have had my full on getting hit with lightning for a while. Naruto then pick up the mouse and puts him on his shoulder. There you can ride on me while I figure out where I am. The mouse looks at him with surprise. Pika. Pikachu. It seemed to ask. Naruto turns his head when the mouse spoke. You can understand me. Pika. Pikachu. It said happily. So, I guess your name Pikachu? The mouse nods its head yes. Okay then. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Do you know how I can get home? Really kit? Asking a mouse how to get home? That is just sad. Snarked Kayubi. Then how do you propose we get back? Asked an annoyed Naruto. However, before Kayubi could answer, the voice that was calling to him answered. Do not worry young Naruto you will be sent back soon enough. Naruto then looks up at the sky. His eyes widen at what he sees. There in the sky is the deer-like creature from the temple. He could literally feel the power flowing off the being. It was like nothing he ever felt. Despite that the power flowing off the creature was not malevolent but benevolent. It was warm and inviting, calm and clear. If Naruto had to place it, it was like he was standing in front of a god or goddess. But before he could ask a question the creature spoke again. Hello Naruto, it is good to finally meet you. You were waiting for me. Why? Asked Naruto. Of course. The reason is because you are the one to help me and my children. Your children? At that moment a bright flash of light blinded Naruto for just a moment. When Naruto could see again his eyes widened again at what he could see. All around him are creatures of varying shapes and sizes. Some look like beasts from myths and legends. Others look like stronger animals he was familiar with. These are your children. They are very cool and impressive. All the creatures and the deer smiled at him for that comment. Thank you Naruto. A mother loves to hear that about her children. Now I know you must have many questions, so let me tell you what you must know. Naruto nods his head and walks closer to the deer. When he gets closer a massive green creature with a large flower on its back, it lowers itself letting him sit on its back. Now Naruto first my name is Arceus. 
The name of my children are the Pokemon with many names for their species. As you can see each are different and unique. They hold great power, greater than any human could ever muster. Now the reason I have called you here is that we need a summoner for our kind, and I have chosen you. Naruto could only drop his jaw at what Arceus has said. But why me? There must be others out there that could be worthy of your power. Arceus shakes her head at that. No Naruto. I have watched your world from the summoning realm since we fled our original world. Out of everyone I have seen you are the only one with a bright and pure soul to wield our power. Naruto is surprised at what he was told. But there is a question he had to ask. Original world. What happened to your original home? Arceus and the Pokemon adopt a sad look on their faces. I am afraid our home was destroyed by an unknown force. I had to use every ounce of my power and my strongest children's power to save every one of my children, but I could not save the humans of our home. For the first time in my long life I failed, and it cost me a lot of good friends. Naruto has a sad look on his face as he speaks. I am sorry for bringing that up. I didn't know. I am so sorry for your loss of both your home and your friends. Arceus and the Pokemon gain happy smiles on their faces at what Naruto says. So, what happens now? Simple Naruto. All you have to do is choose. Do you want to be our summoner or not? The choice is and always will be yours alone. Naruto thinks about this. A new summon could help him greatly. Especially since Jiraiya has not been training him since they left. He also was not taught much by Kakashi. The only thing Kakashi taught Naruto was the tree walking technique and nothing else. Kakashi didn't even train Sakura or Satsuki anything until after the Chunin exams. And the only things he taught them were simple tojutsus and jinjutsus. Before Naruto could answer Arceus, Kayubi spoke up. Listen Kit. I think you should do this. These Pokemon are powerful and you could learn a lot from them. Said Kayubi. Really? What about the toads? I thought I could only have one summon. Asked Naruto. Naruto. Jiraiya is holding you back. You know this. For two months we have been with him and what has he done? Try to sleep with women and peep on them. That is about the most he has done. He has broken the promise to Tsunade on the first day we were out of Kanoha. So, take the deal with Arceus. Trust me on this. Naruto hums at what the Kayubi has said. It's true, two months out, and Jiraiya has broken the promise to Tsunade on the first day. Plus, the Akatsuki are going to target him soon. Naruto can't rely solely on the Kayubi's power, since the organization works in pairs to take down Jinchuriki. So, with that thought Naruto gives Arceus his answer. Okay Arceus. I will be the summoner of the Pokemon. The Pokemon cheer in their own voices at that. For the first time in centuries they have a human to call their friend. Arceus gives Naruto a smile. Thank you Naruto. Now we must go over some things. First, I know that this world is different from our own. In our world we never killed humans often, but in this world that will change. We will help you no matter what even if we must kill other humans, just don't ask the younger ones to do that. Leave the dirty work to the older ones. Second, we will help you become stronger with your abilities. We will teach you Tojutsu, Ninjutsu, Kinjutsu, Jinjutsu, Fuinjutsu and Sage training. We will help you every step of the way. We will never abandon you. We promise. Thank you, Arceus thank you. What about the toads? I can only have one summon at a time. Said Naruto. Don't worry about that. When I send you back you must absorb the jewel of life into your body. When you do, I will break the contract with the toads. After that we will leave for your training. Okay Arceus. Let's do this. Said Naruto with a smirk. Arceus then glows brightly blinding Naruto. When Naruto could see once again, he was back in the abandoned temple with the jewel of life in his hand. Seeing the jewel Naruto knows what to do. He places the jewel over his stomach and the jewel enters his body. He feels his chakra network surge with energy. His eyes then change to emerald green with red pupils. Then a blue aura surrounds him. He feels this for a few more seconds until the energy dies down. The aura dissipates and his eyes turn back to normal. Naruto then sees what look like seals on his body glowing. He was about to ask a question when the seals fade and disappear. What were those seals doing on my body? Where did they come from? If I had to guess it was most likely from the toad kit. He is the only one who could place them on you. Said Kayubi. I agree with the fox young one. He is the only one who has the necessary skills to place them on you. Said Arceus. Arceus. How can I hear you? Asked Naruto. The jewel of life is not just a way for you to become more powerful, but a part of me. So, when you placed it into yourself it linked me to you and vice versa. Explained Arceus. Okay that answers that. But why would Jiraiya place those seals on me? I have an idea. Go back to the camp and wait for Jiraiya to return. When he falls asleep, I will help you to read his mind to find out. Said Arceus. You can read minds. Asked Kayubi. Correct. The Pokemon of the psychic types can read minds. 
And since all Pokémon come from me it is child's play to read minds. Said a confident Arceus. What number am I thinking right now? Asked Kyuubi. You aren't thinking of a number. You're thinking about pancakes. Answered Arceus. Naruto laughs at the how the Kyuubi was found out so easily and the dumbfounded look on his face. After that Naruto leaves the temple but fails to see a figure watching him. The figure is a tall man around 6 feet and 10 inches tall. He wears a full body black cloak that covers his whole body. Organization 13 cloak, hum, so the Naruto of this world has found the jewel of life. The figure grins under the cloak. Good. Soon Naruto you will change the world. But I must wonder will it be full of light or darkness. Only time will tell. Do not disappoint me young Naruto. But that the figure disappeared into a black vortex. Naruto and Jureya's camp. Naruto returned to the camp and found that Jureya had still not returned yet. Naruto shakes his head at that. The pervert must still be trying to hook up with a woman or peep on her, whichever he fancies at the moment. For the next three hours Arceus trained Naruto to use many low and mid-level Pokémon moves. She also trained him in Fuinjutsu. Thanks to his Yuzumaki heritage Naruto picked up on Fuinjutsu easily. While Naruto was making dinner for himself, Jiraiya finally shows up, covered in bruises and bumps. Naruto chuckles at that, seems the great spy got caught, again. Jiraiya ignores Naruto and goes right to bed without even talking to him to find out if he did any of the material Jiraiya left for Naruto. Naruto waits for two more hours before going over to Jiraiya. Suppressing his chakra, Naruto slowly moves over to him. He then places his hand on Jiraiya's head. Arceus then takes over and reads his mind. What they find disturbs them greatly. Naruto then removes his hand and leaves the tent. Going over to a secluded stop, Naruto then looks over what the two of them found out. Naruto begins to shake in anger and sadness. His emotions start to leak out some of the Kyuubi's chakra and his new aura powers. And my parents. Said a very confused Naruto. They are alive. With three other children. Two of them my twin sisters and a younger sister. Naruto begins to cry at this revelation. Why? Why did they abandon me? He yelled out. Damn it. What did I do to deserve this? Calm down Naruto. Please I know you are upset and you have every right to be angry. But if you continue Jiraiya will wake up and he will do everything in his power to make you forget this. Said Arceus. Yeah kid so breath. Naruto then begins to calm down at what they say. After a few minutes Naruto calms down enough to stop producing Kyuubi and Aura energy but is still crying over what he has learned. There we go. Now I know that this is a surprise. I sure as hell didn't know that they are alive. So, what are you going to do kid? Naruto starts to stop crying and gains a look of determination on his face. Arceus, can I ask for your help to use the move agility to get to where my parents are? Of course. But I must ask, what will you do when you find them? Said Arceus. For now, I just want to confirm that they are alive. From there I will figure out what to do then. Said Naruto. But that Naruto gathers all of his belongings from the camp. He then leaves a few gifts for the pervert for when he wakes up in the morning. After moving away from the camp Naruto uses the move agility to go at high speeds. His destination. A small village on the border of fire country and the land of valleys. It took Naruto two hours and a few times of using agility to get there, but Naruto made it just as the sun was beginning to set. Donning a cloak, Naruto suppresses his chakra and moves through the village. He draws no attention from the locals as he minds his own business. He makes it to a nice-sized house on the edge of the village. It is there he sees his family. Naruto feels his stomach harden as he sees them. They look so. Happy. He feels tears on his face as he sees them. As he turns to leave, he feels someone tug his cloak. He looks down and sees a young girl around five with a combination of red and blonde hair looking at him with a bright smile on her face. Hi. I haven't seen you around here before. Where are you from? What is your name? Said the girl. Before Naruto could answer a voice calls out to her. Naruhi. Come on we need to go home, it's time for dinner. Said a woman's voice. Naruto turns to the voice and sees Kashina Yuzumaki, his mother standing there. Oh, but mommy I was about to play with this new guy. Said the now named Naruhi. Tuckle, sorry sweetie, but we need to go home. She then looks at the young man and speaks. Thank you for playing with my daughter. I really wasn't playing with her. She came over to me and started to ask me some questions that's all. But it was no trouble miss. Said Naruto. Kashina nods her head in understanding. She then gently grabs her daughter's hand and begins to walk away. As Naruto begins to leave Naruhi asks him a question. Um mister. Why were you crying before? Naruto stops and looks back at the two of them. What? I saw tears from under your cloak. So, why were you crying? Asked Naruhi. Kashina was about to stop her from asking that question when Naruto answers. It's because your family reminds me of my family. What do you mean young man? Asked Kashina. 
Tsai, my family abandoned me when I was young. Said Naruto getting gasps from the mother and daughter. I only found out because my guardian messed up and I found out. I went out to find them. When I did, they were living a good happy life without me. I didn't even talk to them. I saw no point. So, now I just wander around the elemental nations looking for a place to call home. By this point all three have tears falling down their faces. Naruhi goes over to the man and gives him the biggest hug she could muster. Naruto stiffens a little at the hug, but then lowers down and hugs her back. Kishina then walks over to him and give him a hug as well. Naruto for the first time in his life feels his mother's warmth on his body. He feels more tears fall down his face at that. Kishina then speaks. I am so sorry that that happened to you. That should never have happened to anyone. Can I have your name? Naruto looks into her eyes. Thankfully he changed his eyes to Arceus's eyes before he came here. Call me Zen. Zen Kurigane. Would you like to join us for dinner Zen-san? Asked Kishina. Please say yes Zen and Ayasen. Said Naruhi. Naruto is surprised by this. He is unsure what to do when Arceus speaks to him. You should take them up on the offer. Even with this henjon it will be the first family dinner you will have with them. Plus, with my power they will not see through the henge you're using. Hit listen to her. It will do you some good. Said Kayubi. Okay you two I will do it. Naruto then looks at the two of them and answers. Okay. I will join you. Said Zen with a smile. Yay. Come on Zen and Aisen let's go. Said Naruhi as she tried to drag him to her home. Flame down Naruhi. Thank you for accepting the offer. Said Kishina. No, thank you miss. Said Zen. Kishina, my name is Kishina Yuzumaki. She said with a smile. After that the three walks towards the hidden home of the Yuzumaki Namika's family. The house is a small house for the family that doesn't give themselves away. As the three enter the house Naruto looks around the room. He sees family pictures of different locations around fire country. He was taken out of his musing by another voice from the kitchen. Asan, Naruhi-chan welcome home. Said a young woman with long straight blonde hair that reaches her lower back. Hello, Natsumi. We also have a guest for dinner tonight. Said her mother. The guest Kasan. Who is it? The pervert. Said another female voice coming from up the stairs. Naruto turns towards the stairs and sees a young woman with spiky red hair that reaches her shoulders. No Naruko. This is Zen Kurigane. I offered him to join us for dinner tonight. Said Kashina as she introduces Zen. Zen then bows to the girls. Is that so Kashina-chan? Said a male voice coming from the back of the house. Naruto turns to look at where the voice came from and sees his father, Minato Namika's the yellow flash and Yandame Hokage. Hello, sir. You must be the man of the house. My name is Zen Kurigane. Minato has a smile on his face as he looks at Zen. Nice to meet you Zen. Welcome to our home. He then puts his hand forward for a shake which Zen reciprocates and shakes back. After about an hour dinner was finally served. The family of five plus guests sit at the table for their favorite food. Raymond. As the family begins to eat Zen removes his hood, giving the family a look at what he looks like. Zen has tanned skin, shaggy brown hair with his eyes emerald green and red pupils. He also wears a spiked collar around his neck. And look up Zen from Persona Q to get an idea about what he looks like. The girls blush at his face. Well Minato and Kishina are intrigued by his eyes. Naruhi is just happy that she can see his face. I must say Zen your eyes are interesting. Are they a bloodline limit? Asked Minato. Zen shake his head at that. No sir. These eyes are not a power but a curse. This confuses the family. What do you mean Zen? Why would they be a curse? Asked Kishina. Sai, in the Kurigane family if you are born with these eyes then that means you won't get the power of the family. It basically means I couldn't be a shinobi. Lied Zen. The Namaka's family was shocked by this. His eyes, while beautiful, meant that he didn't get the bloodline limit of the family. Kishina also realizes that this is why his family abandoned him. But before she could change the topic Naruko asked the one question Kishina hoped no one would ask. So where is your family? Asked Naruko. Sai, my family abandoned me when I was young. They left me with a guardian that had no love for me. My guardian even put seals on my body to keep me basically a slave in his house. Said Zen. This gets gasps out of the whole family. The thought of doing that to anyone was horrible to think about. As they were thinking about that, thoughts of their son in Konoha entered the minds of Minato and Kishina. They made a decision to go back to Konoha and be the family they are meant to be. Zen if you would like my wife and I could remove the seals on your body. Offered Minato. Thank you for the offer, but that is unnecessary. My teacher has already removed the seals from my body. Plus, the seals were already failing anyways, since my former guardian was an idiot with seals. Answered Zen. The teacher? Who is your teacher Zen-san? Asked Natsumi. My teacher is a woman by the name of Ark. 
she is not well known since she is not a shinobi. However, her skills in seals and tracking are impressive. Since I couldn't be a shinobi, I needed a non-shinobi teacher. Plus, I owe a debt that I would repay. Said Zen. The family understood what Zen was taking about. If he couldn't be a ninja, he would need a different profession. As a tracker Zen could go after bandits and low-level missing men. So, where is your teacher? Asked Minato. She is currently tracking a lad on an organization called Akatsuki for a client. I am to meet her in a nearby village tomorrow. Said Zen. While Minato and Kishina didn't show it, they were surprised that someone was tracking the Akatsuki. Jiraiya told them both that the group is after the Biju and Jinchurikis. When they heard that they both wanted to go home and help Naruto immediately. However, Jiraiya stopped them saying that it would be a bad idea and for them to remain hidden until the time was right. Plus, according to Jiraiya the daimyo has yet to let them return from hiding yet. So, until the daimyo says otherwise the Namika's family must remain in hiding. Who in the Akatsuki is your teacher tracking? Asked Natsumi. I don't know. But if I had to guess it would be the ones who went after the Kayubi Jinchiriki months ago. Itachi Ichiha and Kisum Hashigaki. I believe are their names. Answered Zen. Both parents were shocked at that. Why didn't Jiraiya say anything about Naruto being in danger? Now they really need to get more information about the situation, and Zen seemed to be the best option right now. Do you know if the Kayubi Jinchiriki was captured by the Akatsuki? Asked a worried Kishina. If Zen told her that her baby was in danger, then screw what the daimyo and Jiraiya says. She would leave in full battle gear and save her baby boy. Fortunately, Zen shakes his head no other question. No. From what my teacher has found out they failed to capture the Kayubi Jinchiriki. After that the group has gone to ground. So, Ark was hired to find any information about them before the tale goes cold. Answered Zen. I see. Thank you for telling us this. But my question is why tell us this anyways? Information is powerful so why tell us? Asked Minato. Ark has taught me to trust my instincts, and they tell me that I can trust you all with this information. Answered Zen. With that Zen gets up and puts his bowl in the sink and makes his way to the door. Thank you for the food and hospitality, but I must get going if I am to meet my teacher in the morning. What? But it's dark out. Shouldn't you stay for the night? Said Naruko. Don't worry about me Naruko-san thanks to my training I can see perfectly in the dark of the night, as if it was the brightest of days. Plus, my teacher is expecting me in the morning, and I mustn't be late. Said Zen with a smile. Very well Zen-san. Just be careful out here. I do hope to meet you and your teacher soon. Said Minato with a smile. Zen turns to them and gives them all a smile. As do I. One last thing. May your heart guide you through your darkest nights and brightest of days. Just something my teacher says to me. Have a good night. With that Zen puts his hood on and leaves the house into the night. Ashina then turns to her husband and speaks to him. Minato, we need to go back to Konoha. I can't take it anymore. I want to feel Naruto in my arms and know that he is safe. Minato looks at his wife and sees the pain in her eyes. He knows that this was basically torture for her to be away from one of her children. Well he knows that Naruto has been raised by Jiraiya and Tsunade, but he can't help but feel that something has gone wrong. He nods his head at her and speaks. You're right Kashina. We need to go home and be with Naruto. Enough time has passed for the Kyubi's chakra in Naruko and Natsumi's seals to stabilize and for all of the tails to reform in Naruto. So, now there is no longer any danger from the three being near each other that the fox will try and take back its power and killing them in the process. Minato then turns to his daughters. Okay girls tomorrow I want you to pack your things. We are going to Konoha in three days to be with your brother. He says with a smile. The girls cheer loudly at that. They will finally be with their older brother. After that the girls put their dishes in the sink and head to bed so they could get ready for the days ahead. Ashina goes over to Minato and kiss him. Thank you Minato. No. Please forgive me, we should have gone back sooner. Hopefully, Naruto will forgive us for not being with him for so long. Said a saddened Minato. Ashina cups his face and turns it to her. It's going to be okay. He is in Yuzumaki and we always love family above all. So no more worrying, okay? Minato smiles at her. Okay. And Sheena then smirks at him that sends chills down his spine. But I would expect a punch from him for putting the furball in him when you see him. Minato then sweat drops at that. With an uneasy smile he speaks. Ha ha, yes I think he probably would do that. And to be honest I definitely deserve it. But that the two adults head to bed for the night unaware that Naruto heard everything the family said. So, they are going back to Konoha in three days. They want to finally be a family. Sigh, what I wouldn't give to have that years ago. Said Naruto. What are you going to do Kit? Will you forgive them or curse them? Asked the Kayubi. As much as I would love to be with them, the threat of the Akatsuki and Jiraiya's plan takes priority right now. 
So, with that end I can't be with them, not yet. What is the plan Naruto? Asked Arceus. There is only one plan right now. Naruto takes off his headband and looks at it. I love Konoha and the people I have made friends within it. But I can't protect it if those that wish to harm it are also within Konoha. In order to help them I must do the one thing I thought I would never do. He then grips the headband tight in his hands, almost crushing it. I must no longer be a Konoha shinobi. But that Naruto jumps into the darkness of the night. The full moon shining in the background as he makes his way to Konoha one last time for the foreseeable future. Konoha Midnight. All was quiet in Konoha. Most of the village was asleep with only those who were either assigned night duty or who lost a bet to their fellow ninjas to be on the dreaded night watch. It was at this moment we find Naruto moving through the village with no one the wiser. Since a young child Naruto was able to evade the village Anbu with ease be it at night or during the day. He first went to his parents' compounds and sealed everything in them since his parents left them for him so that Jiraiya and Tsunade could teach him and the family techniques. After that Naruto heads to the Uzumaki Forbidden Mask Shrine and grabbed all of the masks there. He would make sure that no one would use them against him or his friends. When he was done, he left letters in all of his friends' homes, explaining that he would not be coming home for a very long time and apologizes to them all especially Hinata, Satsuki, Ino and Sakura. He also left a letter in his parents' home for his family for when they arrive. After that Naruto makes a shadow clone and sends it to the Hokage's office. Before Naruto came back to Konoha, the Kayubi told him of the shadow clone's secret that the he would gain the memories of the clone after it dissipates. Naruto then leaves Konoha through the north gate. Before he does, he looks back at Konoha. Sorry everyone. But I can't protect you as I am. But we will meet again when I am strong enough. I promise. Said Naruto. He then uses agility to move away from Konoha in the blink of an eye. Konoha Hokage's office. In the large office of the strongest ninja village of the elemental nations sits the strongest woman on the planet, Tsunade Senju. What was she doing so late at night? Dealing with the bane of all cages, paperwork. Yes, the job of the cage is not all fun and games. It's more like a glorified paper pusher. The reason she was working so late was because her assistant Shizun told her that the paperwork was piling up too much and needed to be done. So here Tsunade sat burning the midnight oil trying to get the paperwork done. She was on the last paper when her concentration is broken by a familiar voice. Hey, Bachan. Working hard I see. Said the voice with some mirth in it. Tsunade then grabs a paperweight and throws it at where the voice came from. The paperweight missed since she heard it hit the wall. Will you stop calling me that Naruto, and what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be with Jiraiya? Yelled asked Tsunade. Naruto smirks at her. To answer your first question. No way. I like calling you that. Tsunade gains a tick mark on her head at that. Naruto then loses his smile as he continues. As for your second and third question. Jiraiya's training has been anything but. The man didn't even wait a day before going off and trying to pick up women or peep on them. Tsunade begins to growl but not at Naruto. But at Jiraiya. Tsunade then calms down and begins to speak. I am sorry Naruto. I should have known he would do this. I should never have trusted him especially after the fact that he lied to me about your death for years. Naruto smiles at Tsunade. It's okay Bachan. I never blamed you for that. You trusted him because he is your former teammate. I get it. Tsunade smiles right back at him. So, where is the pervert? Do you convince him to come back or? Naruto shakes his head. No, left him in the camp we made about 8 hours ago about 25 miles southeast of Konoha. He came back covered in bumps, bruises and cuts with blood and went to sleep. Probable after failing to woo a woman to bed then peeped on her when she said no. That damn bastard. Kami damn it. Tsunade reigns in her anger, then speaks again. Well at least he was beaten for the act. Don't worry Naruto we will figure something out for your training. Naruto then gains a small sad smile, knowing what he was about to start next. About that Tsunade. Tsunade's eyes widen when she hears that. Naruto only says her name if he is serious about something. I realized something today from Jiraiya. So long as I am here or with Konoha, I will never be as strong as I want to be. Tsunade gains a dark feeling in her stomach. What do you mean Naruto? What did you learn from Jiraiya? I learned the reason why he doesn't want to train me. And that reason is. The reason is that he doesn't want to waste his time with those that he believes are meant to die. Answered Naruto. Tsunade's eyes widen even more at that. Wh wa what do you mean Naruto? Why would Jiraiya think you are going to die? She begins to start hand signs for medical ninjutsu just in case Naruto is sick and needs treatment. Because he has plans for me and my Jinchuriki brothers and sisters throughout the elemental nations to die. What do you mean by that? Jiraiya found a scroll that said that there is a way to kill the Biju. Revealed Naruto. That is impossible. The Biju are living chakra beings. You can't kill them. Yelled Tsunade. Correct. 
No human can kill them. Said Naruto. Tsunade then realizes what he means. But the Biju can kill each other. Yes. The scroll states that if all nine of the Biju fires their Bijudamas at each other at the same time, the resulting energy wave will kill them. And I mean a permanent death. No coming back after a few years. No, a true death. Jiraiya has always hated the Biju. He thinks that they should never have existed and should be destroyed. He plans to make me just strong enough to kill my Jinchuriki brethren, but not enough to fight back against him. But that doesn't make any sense. If he did that then all of the villages would be on even playing fields. He would only make a plan if Kanoha and Kanoha alone would come out on top. Questioned Tsunade. She does make a point. She knows her former teammate well. He is a pervert and a rider of smut, but he is a fanatical believer of Kanoha's superiority. He wouldn't make a plan unless Kanoha came out on top in the end. Naruto nods his head at her. You're right Jiraiya wouldn't make a plan like this unless Kanoha would be on top. And with his plan Kanoha would. But how Naruto? What are you not telling me? Tsunade could feel the dark pit in her stomach tighten up more as Naruto spoke. Taking in a deep breath, Naruto then drops one of the biggest bombs he is going to drop tonight. The reason Kanoha would come out on top is because Kanoha would still have a Jinchuriki after my death through my sisters. Tsunade for just a moment stops breathing. She could feel her world begin to break and shatter. Shakily she asks. SS sisters. Naruto what do you mean sisters? You are an only child. Naruto shakes his head. No, I have sisters. Three sisters, two of them my twin sisters and one five years young. With my twins having the yang and yin halves of the Kyuubi's original power in each of them respectively. Tsunade begins to process this information. But what he says about the younger sister gets her eyes to widen once again. Young sister? You mean that? Naruto nods his head at her. Yes, my parents are alive and well. Tsunade's eyes almost pops out of her skull at that revelation. They are alive how? I came here and saw their bodies and. It was at that moment she realized how this was possible. Blood clones with seals. That fucking bastard. He tricked all of us. The clan heads, here is in sensei, the daimyo and me with those damn blood clones. At this point Tsunade was clenching her fist so tight her nails here drawing blood through her skin in anger. That is correct. He even tricked mom and dad with a fake scroll from the daimyo, ordering them into hiding for the past 14 years. He even lied to them about the two of you raising me. He has been planning this ever since the toads told him about the prophecy. He has lied, stolen and killed many just to get what he wanted. Fame and glory for all time. He thinks that by training the children of prophecy, who he believes are my twin sisters, and killing the biju will grant him whatever he desires. He even told the man that attacked mom on the night me and my sisters were born where she was so he could release the Kyubi and force dad to seal it into me and my sisters. Said Naruto. Tsunade could feel the blood drain from her face at that. She could not believe what she was hearing. But the evidence is right in her face and the pieces match. Jiraiya has been obsessed with the prophecy since he heard it and tells anyone who would listen. He did lie to both her and their deceased sensei about many things. He lied to her about Naruto's death. He lied to Hiruzen about her not wanting to raise Naruto forcing him to live alone almost all of his life. But before she could truly come to terms with all of this, Naruto begins to speak again. And that is why I must do what I must do. Said Naruto. Tsunade is confused by what Naruto says. Naruto then digs through his pockets and takes out two items. He walks over to her desk and places them on top of the desk. Her eyes widen at the item she sees. Naruto's headband and ninja license. She looks up at him as tears begins to form in her eyes. As of this moment I resign from being a Kanoha shinobi. Why? Why would you quit being a shinobi? Ask a shaking Tsunade as tears threaten to fall from her face. I am not quitting being a shinobi. I just can't continue being a shinobi for Kanoha. I know Jiraiya couldn't do all of this on his own. He needed help to do all of this. And I know they are here in Kanoha. That is why I have to leave. Said Naruto. Leave? What do you mean leave? Naruto you won't be able to solve your problems by running away. Said Tsunade. I'm not running away. I just can't get stronger here in Kanoha. Not while well those that want to see me weak and dead are here. Trust me Tsunade, I didn't come to this decision easily, but so long as they are here, I can't truly protect my friends and myself. So, with that I realized I must leave for a while. Said Naruto with determination in his eyes. Naruto please. Tsunade began to beg him as tears began to fall down her face. Please don't leave. We can make this work. I will send out Shinobi and capture Jiraiya and force him to tell us where your family is. We can bring them home. We will stop him, please don't leave me. I am sorry Tsunade, but I must do this. Besides my family will be here in three days. By that time, I need to be long gone. Plus, the Akatsuki are still a problem. No doubt Jiraiya leaked the information to them the first time when he and I went to find you. 
With that Naruto goes over to Tsunade and gives her a hug. She then hugs him back. Don't worry Bachan. We will see each other again. I promise. But as Naruto tries to end the hug and leave, Tsunade tightens her grip on him. I don't care what you say or promise Naruto. I will not let you go. I don't care if I have to hug you for the rest of my life if it means that you stay with me. Said Tsunade as even more tears fall down her face. I am sorry Bachan. I really didn't want to make you cry, but I need to do this. There is no other choice right now. There is always a choice. And I choose to not let you go. Said a hysterical Tsunade. Naruto holds her tighter and then says. I am sorry, but in this case, there is no other choice since I am already gone. And with that the shadow clone poofs into smoke. Tsunade sits in her chair in shock. Naruto was gone. The boy she considers her little brother at least and at best her son has left. Left her. She begins to shake in both sadness and rage. Sadness since she has just lost another family member. And rage at Jiraiya and those that helped him chase Naruto away from her. Suddenly her chakra spikes to insane levels. Tsunade then jumps out of her chair and screams to the heavens and punches her desk so hard that there was nothing left of it, not even splinters. I I I erg. It was at this point both Shizune and the Anbu captain, plus Anbu Niko rush into her office. Lady Tsunade. What is wrong? Asks Shizune. Tsunade turns to them with pure fury in her eyes. Anbu. I want all but two squads to lock down this village. No one leaves. Got it. Yelled Tsunade. The yes my lady. Said the Anbu captain. With that most of the Anbu leave the room. Tsunade then turns to Niko. Niko. I want you and two squads of Anbu to go and find Jiraiya. And I want him here before sunrise. He is somewhere 25 miles southeast from here. Go. Ha ah, hi my lady. Said Niko. She then left to grab her squad and wolf squad, since he was finally cleared for Anbu work again after Tsunade healed him of his sickness. Shizune was now the only one left in the room with her sensei. She slowly walked over to her to find out what was wrong. My lady. She asked lightly. What is wrong? Tsunade then turns to her student. She walks over to her slowly. When she finally reaches her student, she pulls her into a huge hug. Tsunade then begins to cry once again. Shizune. She says through her sobbing. He's gone. He left us. Shizune is confused at this. What are you talking about? Who left us? Tsunade then looks into Shizune's eyes. Naruto. Shizune's eyes widens. Naruto left us. He said he couldn't be a Konoha shinobi, so long as that there are those within the government that want him dead. Shizune begins to cry along with her master. He is gone, and I don't know where he is. The two women begin to cry as they held each other. The boy they both came to love as a little brother and a son is gone. Then miles away from the valley of the end. Naruto has just gained the memories from the clone he sent to Konoha. He knows that he has broken Tsunade's heart with that stunt, but it had to be done. Jiraiya has powerful allies that will keep him alive and out of prison. Not even the daimyo can place him in a prison due to Jiraiya's spy network. Jiraiya is the only one who knows everything about it, to remove him would weaken not only Konoha, but all of the Land of Fire. Naruto then hears something coming towards him. As he was about to get into a fighting stance he stops. Using his aura, he senses that it is one of his other clones. The clone enters the field and then hands Naruto a massive ceiling scroll. The clone dissipates into smoke. Naruto then looks at the massive scroll. Naruto had sent that clone and others to the homeland of the Uzumaki, Yuzushio, to grab everything there. Just as Naruto was about to leave, he hears a shout. Naruto then jumps through the trees to where the shout came from. When he arrives, he sees two girls, one with long black hair with a ribbon tie on the end of it, and a girl with long red hair being attacked by a group of bandits numbering around 20. The girl with black hair is being held against a tree by one of the larger bandits, while the red head is being held on the ground, with her legs broken shouting at them. The motherfucking bastards. Let Kin go you fucking shit eaters. Yelled the redhead. Stop it. Let Taiya go. Just take me and leave her alone. Said the now named Kin. The bandits begin to laugh at the girls. The leader then spoke. Now, now ladies. Don't start yelling yet. He then smirked evilly at them. Soon you both will be screaming in pleasure. All of the bandits gained looks of lust on their faces. Both girls begin to feel dread raising in their souls as the bandits begin to remove their pants. Just as the bandits do more, two flaming kunai struck the bandits trying to remove Kin and Taiya's pants in their heads. As the bodies of the bandits fall to the ground and burn to ash, the rest of the bandits take out their weapons and get ready for a fight. Kin seeing an opening pulls up her pants and runs to Taiya and helps her pull up her pants and moves her around a tree to safety. The bandit leader, now furious that someone got in his way, starts yelling out. All right asshole come out. Now. I will show you not to mess with me and my group. Before Naruto could show himself, Arceus speaks up. Naruto, I believe you should use some of your new powers for this fight. 
What do you have in mind? Thought Naruto. With the help from one of my children you can gain his power for a time. However, it won't be at full strength and you can only use the power for a short time. So, you it wisely and quickly. Said Arceus. Okay thought Naruto. And then Naruto, with both Arceus and her son's help, began to absorb nature chakra. After a few seconds Naruto began to transform. His body began to glow and change. His clothes changed from orange to white and light blue. He also gains twin sabers. Sage mode. Kabalian. The shout gains the attention of the bandits. When they turn to see where the shout came from, they see Naruto standing on a high branch in the trees. When they get a good look at him, they begin to laugh. Ha ha ha. Oh my god. Ha ha ha. What are you supposed to be? Some kind of clown. Said the leader. Naruto did not answer him, but instead, he moved at high speed and quickly cut down eight more of the bandits while they were still laughing. No longer laughing, the remaining bandits tried to attack him, but Naruto was too fast for them. One by one the bandits fell to Naruto and his sabers. The last bandit standing is the leader and he was mad. How? How did you, a fucking child, kill all of my men? We had the numbers. You couldn't have beaten us. So, how did we lose? Yelled the leader. Naruto then spoke in a voice full honor and propose. Because I am the sword of justice. And the swords of justice will never fall to evil. Naruto then charges up his sabers for one last attack. Sacred sword. The sabers cut right through the bandit's weapon and body. The bandit stood there for just a moment and then falls down in four pieces. Naruto then powers down and falls to his knees. Huff puff. Going to have to get stronger before I try that again. Thank you Arceus, Kabalian. Naruto then hears someone coming closer to him. He turns around and sees the girl with black hair walking towards him. He recognizes her from the Chunin exams and then he remembers the red head from the retrieval mission. But before he could speak the girl speaks up first. Um, thank you for saving me and Teaya from those bandits. You're welcome. Not to be rude, but why are two of Orochimaru's subordinates out here in fire country with one of them with broken legs? Said Naruto. Former subordinates. Said Teaya. That fucking snake and his four-eyed fuck buddy came out here and found us. They then told us that they didn't need us anymore. The only saving grace is that they didn't kill us. Said that they didn't need to. That was two months ago. We have been out here since. But Teaya said is true. We have been living out here since Orochimaru abandoned us. Said Kin. I see. Said Naruto. Thinking about this for a minute, Naruto then has an idea. Hey, why don't you both come with me? Huh? They both said. I know that this might sound crazy, but you both can't live out here forever. So, why not come with me? Uh, because you are a Konoha shinobi. And if we go with you your village will kill us both. Said Teaya. But I am not a Konoha shinobi, not anymore that is. Said Naruto. You're not a Konoha shinobi. But when did you stop being one? Asked Kin. About an hour ago. Why? Asked Teaya. Sai, the short version is that there are many within Konoha's government that want me dead by any means. And I can't get stronger and protect my friends if those who want me dead are still in power. Explained Naruto. The girls nod their heads at that. They then look at each other and have a silent conversation. Kin then turns to Naruto. Okay. We will join you. I just hope we can get Teaya some medical help soon. Naruto smiles at them. Don't worry Kin when we reach where we are going, I will heal Teaya's legs. If you can fix my legs then why don't you do it now shithead? Yelled Teaya. The reason is that I am almost out of chakra and I need the last of it to summon our ride out of here. Said Naruto. He then goes through hand signs and says summoning jutsu. After that there were three poofs of smokes. From the smoke came three creatures that the girls have never seen. One looked like a large bird of prey. Another looked like the bird was covered in metal. The last one looked like a dragon with a flame on the tip of its tail. Pidgeo. Scar. Char. The girls had wide eyes at the creatures. Naruto then speaks. Girls meet my new summons and our rides out of here. Meet Pidgeot, Skarmory and Charizard. Each Pokemon nods their heads when their names are said. I call the flaming lizard. Said Teaya. Everyone laughs at that. Charizard then goes over to Teaya and gentle picks her up and puts her on his back. Pidgeot goes over to Kin and nudges her to climb on top of her. Naruto then gets on Skarmory. Okay girls. It's time to go. Said Naruto. So, where are we going? Asked Kin as she held on for dear life. We are going to the one place no one would look for us. The unclaimed regions of the elemental nations. Said Naruto. The unclaimed regions but no one goes there. Yelled Teaya. Naruto nods his head. Exactly. And with that the three teens flew towards the unclaimed regions. They would not be seen by anyone for the next three years. Forest of fire 24 miles away from Kanoha. Here we find two squads of Kanoha's finest shinobi running through the forest. 
The Anbu unit is comprised of the best of the best in Kanoha. They could track and find anyone they need or kill any target they are assigned. The only person the Anbu unit had problems with is Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. The little ball of sunshine was able to outrun their fastest, hide from their best trackers, and prank them every week for eight months straight without them stopping him once. These two units that are running through the forest happens to be the ones who like Naruto the most. They were sent to find the Toad Sage Jiraiya by the Hokage Tsunade and bring him back to Konoha for questioning and possible a massive beating, most likely the beating. Nico, do you know why Tsunade is yelling for Jiraiya to be returned to Konoha? Asked Wolf. I believe that something has happened to Naruto. She was incredibly furious when she ordered me to grab you and our squads. Said Nico. But Naruto is with Jiraiya, isn't he? Asked Wolf. Something must have happened. Now come on. We need to find Jiraiya and get him back to Konoha before morning. Said Nico. All of a sudden, the squads of Anbu hear a loud yell coming from the distance. Bio. Oh, come on. Okay Naruto I get it I need to make more of an effort in your training. Now let me down. Said the voice. The two squads of Anbu enter a clearing and they begin to laugh. The reason? Jiraiya is tied up in his sleeping bag, upside down 30 feet in the air and covered in honey. Along with a giant bear trap underneath him, with what looks like two bears with bibs around their necks and utensils in their paws drooling at the trapped salmon. Well this makes our jobs easier. Said Nico. Yeah. I will deal with the bears and trap. You get Jiraiya down. Said Wolf. They then get to work in getting Jiraiya down. Turns out the bears were really shadow clones of Naruto who henged into the bears. After the clones dispersed and the trap was removed, Nico cut Jiraiya down, without anyone catching him. Oof. Ouch, that hurt. Why didn't anyone catch me? Asked Jiraiya. Think of it as punishment for peeping on me and the other Kanoichi of the village and the nations. Said Nico. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Now can you untie me? For some reason I can't get out of this. Said Jiraiya. The reason you can't get out is because there is a seal on the rope that stops your chakra from being used. This really makes our job easier. Said Wolf. Really? Damn the brat is finally making some progress. Wait, what job? Said Jiraiya. Orders from Tsunade. We are to bring you back to Konoha immediately. Answered Nico. Why? Don't know. All I know is that Tsunade is very angry with you. She ordered the village into lockdown before she sent us out to get you. Said Nico. Yeah well Tsunade can wait. I need to find Naruto and see what else he has done so far. Now untie me so I can do that. Said Jiraiya. Sorry Lord Jiraiya, but Tsunade ordered us to bring you back to Konoha before morning. Said Wolf. Wolf then ordered two other Anbu agents to grab Jiraiya. Nico then had the rest of the Anbu agents to grab everything in the camp. Jiraiya complained but was ignored. The group then left unaware that someone was watching. Same mysterious person from the first chapter. Ho ho, so Tsunade has finally had enough of Jiraiya's actions huh? The figure then smirked under his black hood. Oh, this is going to be good. It will be almost as good as when Kashina gets her hands on Jiraiya's neck. Ha 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 ha, oh I got to record this for the future. Maybe I will get a prize for if I submit it to that TV show. The figure then entered his dark portal and left. Anoha a few hours later. After a few hours of running, plus listening to Jiraiya complain, the squad of Anbu returned to Kanoha without incident. They bring the tied up Sanin into the Hokage's office. There they see not only the Hokage, but also all the clan heads and their children, along with the senseis except Kakashi and Sasuke. Most of the people in the room look pissed. Others are close to tears. Naruto's friends have the letters that he left for them in their hands. Satsuki looks like she is going to strangle someone in a few seconds. Hinata, Ino and Sakura are both glaring at Jiraiya and ready to cry at what has happened. Uh, mission completed Hokage-sama. May I ask why are the clan heads, their children and senseis are here? Said Nico. They are here because this concerns them. Now, was Jiraiya any trouble? Said Tsunade who was glaring at Jiraiya with such intensity that any harder he would have caught on fire. The Anbu agent started to chuckle a bit confusing everyone in the room. Wolf then began to speak. No Hokage-sama he was no trouble. The reason is because it appears Naruto played a prank on Jiraiya. It involved Jiraiya's sleeping bag, a rope with a seal on it, honey, a bear trap and two shadow clones henged into bears. Everyone got a quick laugh at that. However, the mood quickly went back to a serious setting. I see. Is the seal on the rope still strong? At Wolf's nod, Tsunade then dismisses the Anbu agents. So, why am I back in Kanoha so soon? Me and Naruto were only gone for two months. And why is everyone glaring at me? Asked Jiraiya. Tsunade took in a deep breath. Jiraiya, I am going to ask you this only once. And you better answer me with the truth or you will regret it. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow at that. What do you mean Tsunade? What is this all about? 
Do you have a plan to kill the Biju and sacrifice Naruto to do it? Asked Tsunade. Hiraya began to sweat a bit at that. How? How does she know about that? I told no one. So, how did Tsunade find out? This might explain why the clan heads and their children are angry. No doubt they were told by Tsunade. I am going to have to lie my pants off to get out of this. Thought Jiraiya. What are you talking about Tsunade? You know as well as I do that no one can kill a Biju. And why would I kill Naruto? He is my godson for crying out loud. Lied Jiraiya. Jiraiya was then punched so hard he threw up what was in his stomach. Jiraiya then looked into the very angry eyes of Tsunade. Wrong answer. Inachi. Yes, my lady. Enter his mind. Find the proof of what he has done. And find out if Minato and Kishina are alive. Said Tsunade. Yes, my lady. Ino please help me. Said Inachi. Yes daddy. Said Ino. Now Jiraiya was sweating even more. How does she know that Minato and Kishina are alive? I hid their deaths from everyone, including the daimyo and sensei. Inachi and Ino then placed their hands on Jiraiya's head. Jiraiya tried to fight it. But Shikaku and Shikamaru held him down with their shadow techniques. After a few minutes both mind walkers exited Jiraiya's mind. Ino went over to a trash bin and started to throw up into it. Choji and Asuma went over to her to help ease her through it. Oh oh, Kakam Kami. Stuttered out Ino. The things in his head. He is a monster. Tsunade went over to Ino to help calm her down. Sakura and Hinata also went over to help Ino. It's alright Ino. Calm down. You are safe here. Ino begins to calm down with her teachers and friends' help. Tsunade then turns to Inachi. What did you and Ino find Inachi? Ureya has done horrible things my lady. First, he lied to everyone in the village about Minato's and Kishina's deaths. He then lied to them about taking care of Naruto. He said that he had already contacted you to help him raise Naruto. He then lied to Hiruzen about you not wanting to take care of Naruto. He lied to you about him being alive. He even killed three of our Jonans who found Minato and Kishina by accident. He also told the masked man where Kishina was giving birth to Naruto and his sisters. He even found a pair of Yuzumakis and sold them to Orochimaru without telling him that they were Yuzumakis. Gureya was then blasted with killing intent so hard that he almost passed out. The energy and hatred was like nothing he had ever felt before. Tsunade was looking at him with murder in her eyes. You. Said Tsunade in a deep demonic voice. You fucking bastard. First you lied to everyone in this village and the daimyo. Then lied to me about Naruto's death. And planned to have him die just to kill the Biju in some sick form of hatred. And now I find out that you sold two of my family to that snake what the fuck is wrong with you? Listen to me Tsunade. This is just a misunderstanding. There is no way to kill the Biju, and I would never kill Naruto. Plus, Minato and Kishina are gone. Naruto is an only child. And I would never give Orochimaru anyone let alone Yuzumaki's. Trust me. Lied Jiraiya. He was trying to buy some time to get away. He needed to get out of Konoha and hide Minato and Kishina. Then find Naruto and remove him from view in order to make his plan for the Biju to work. But before Jiraiya could move he was punched again, but this time by Satsuki. You fucking pervert. Do you honestly think we would believe a word you would say, Naruto left us all letters of what you were going to do to him. He even told Tsunade about this last night. Makoto then grabbed her daughter and moved her away from the pervert. Even though Makoto would like nothing more than to kill him here he sat, they needed more information from him, and they couldn't get it if he was unconscious or dead. Tsutsuki is right. There is no longer a reason to lie anymore Jiraiya. You have been caught red-handed. Plus, Inachi and Ino went into your mind. There are no lies in there and you know it. Swan then looks to Guy. Guy, go into Jiraiya's belongings and find the scroll about the Biju. Guy nods his head. His usual smile not on his face. Right now, he was not happy and for good reason. Naruto was the driving force behind his pupil Lee getting the use of his legs again. Guy owes a debt of gratitude to Naruto that could not easily be repaid. Now, he will help Naruto from this gruesome fate. Guy looks through Jiraiya's stuff even as the man is yelling at him to stop. After a few minutes of finding everything from clothes to food, even his itcha itcha books and notes, which were burned to ashes immediately, Guy found the scroll he was looking for. Where it is my lady. The Biju death scroll. Said Guy. He then hands it to Tsunade. Tsunade then looks at the scroll. Her anger continues to raise as she reads it. Jiraiya is now trying very hard to escape, but due to the Naras and the Inuzukas and their dog companions, he would not get more than a few inches before he would be attacked and subdued. After a few seconds of silence, it is broken when Tsunade puts the scroll down. She then gets up out of her chair and walks over to Jiraiya. Jiraiya then gulps as he wonders what she is going to do to him. His answer comes in the form of her breaking his right leg by snapping it to a 90 degrees angle. Now answer me. Why did you do this? Said Tsunade. 
Gireya looks into her eyes and sees something he has not seen in years. The eyes of pure fury, the fury of a senju. The last time he saw that look was when she asked him if he had a hand in Dan's death. He was able to lie his way out of that one, but he knows that with all of this evidence, he couldn't lie his way out of this one. So, for the first time in long time he told the truth. Ein, the reason is that the elementals nations would be better off without the Biju. Said Jiraiya. They cannot be controlled. They need to be killed off. That is bullshit and you know it. The Biju were meant to be protectors for the nations. The only reason we sealed them up was because of Madara. Now tell me the real reason why now. Yelled Sunade. Fine. When I was told of the prophecy that said I would train the child who would save the world I knew that I could gain great amount of fame and fortune. After years of being in other people's shadows I can finally have my shadow be throw over others and it won't be outdone. Answered Jiraiya. So, let me get this straight. You lied to me, our sensei, the daimyo, the clan heads and their families. You even lied to your own student and his wife. On top of this you gave away two Yuzumakis to Orochimaru, who are probable both dead now mind you, for fame and glory. And all because you wanted to be out of other people's shadows. Said Tsunade as her anger rose to new heights. Yes. Naruto was needed to be weak and ready to die in order for the Biju and their Jinchurikis to die with him. If he had any family, he would have fought tooth and nail in order to get stronger and survive to be with them. What I did may seem wrong and immoral, but it was necessary. Answered Jiraiya. Jiraiya then screamed out in pain. The reason. Hinata punched his already broken leg into a different position. Her Byakugan was on and it had the same fury in them that her mother was known for. Her father and Kurinai had to stop her from attacking again before she did more damage. Hinata stand down. I know that you are angry, trust me I am too. But before we get to the beating, I need to ask one more question. Said Tsunade. Hinata the nods but does not look at her. Her glare remains on Jiraiya as he squirms under her gaze. One last question. Tsunade then looked into Jiraiya's eyes. Do you have any regret for what you have done? None. Answered Jiraiya without any guilt or remorse. I see. Very well then. Tsunade then turned to the rookies. Shikamaru, I want you and the other rookies to go out and find Naruto. We need him back in the village. Leave right now. Ordered Tsunade. Shikamaru looked like he was going to protest, but a quick look from both his father and Asuma told him to not argue with the order. Fine. Come on guys. Let's go find Naruto and bring him home. The rookies left the room reluctantly and went out to find their friend. After the rookies left, Tsunade grabbed Jiraiya by the face and lifted him out of the chair. She squeezed his head so hard he began to bleed. Because of you the boy I see as a son has left the village. He quit being a Konoha shinobi in order to protect his friends. You forced him to live alone and in fear for most of his life. Also you could have your 15 minutes of fame. Tsunade's and the clan head's anger grew as she spoke. It was at this point Jiraiya knew he was in deep shit. I am going to make you suffer greatly for what you have done. For the next 8 hours Jiraiya would be beaten and tortured in ways that would make Ibuki and Anko crap their pants many times over, and not in a good way. Jiraiya's screams would be heard throughout Kanoha and around a 10 mile radius of the village. They even had silencing seals in place, but the screams would still be heard. But this pain would be nothing to what Jiraiya would feel when Kashina got her hands on him. Close to the valley of the end. The rookies of Kanoha ran through the trees in hot pursuit for their runaway friend. Unlike when Sasuke ran away, Naruto was not running for power. No, he was running to protect not only himself but his friends as well. I don't get it. Why would Naruto go this way? Asked Tenten. Actually, this makes sense. Naruto is trying to mask his scent by going the same path from a few months ago to increase his chances of escape. Said Shino. Yeah. Even though it has been a few months his original scent is still here. So, it makes it much harder to track. Said Kiba. Whatever the reason we need to find him. Said Choji. I can't believe Naruto would do this. Doesn't he trust us? We are his friends. Said Ino. Troublesome, Naruto is doing this because he is trying to protect us. Said Shikamaru. What do you mean? Asked Lee. He means is that there is no way Jiraiya could do this on his own. He would need help and the help is in Konoha. Remember what his letter said. Said Nichi. Yeah. Someone in the government of both Konoha and the Daimyo's court must have helped Jiraiya. It's the only explanation. So, in order to protect us he had to leave. Said Sakura. That still doesn't give him the right to leave. Especially without telling us in person. Said Satsuki. Satsuki, you know he couldn't tell us in person. We would have probable tried to stop him from leaving. I know I would have tried to stop him. Said Hanada. Everyone nods their heads at that. If Naruto had gone to them then they would have tried to convince him to stay. It was at this point Akimaru started to bark. What is he saying? Asked Shikamaru. He says that he smells blood, lots of blood. Answered Kiba. 
the group widen their eyes at that. Fear that Naruto might be hurt races thou their minds. Niji. Hinata. Shikamaru ordered. Ayakugan. They both said. A few seconds later they both gasped. What is it? Asked Tenten. I see what looks like a bloodbath just a few yards away. Said Niji. Hi, I see it too. But I don't see Naruto. Said Hinata. Come on. We better go take a look. Said Shikamaru. The group ran towards where the fight took place. A moment later they come across what looks like a one-sided fight. Whoa. What happened here? Asked Ino. I don't know. These guys look like bandits, but I can't tell what kind of a weapon did this. Said Sakura. It was some kind of saber. By the looks of the cuts and the slashes it looks like two were used. Said Tenten. Right, weapon mistress. Of course, you would know this. Said Sakura playfully. Tenten smirked at her. Naruto did this. Said Shino. Are you sure? I mean Naruto is not the type to kill people for no reason. Even if they are bandits. Said Satsuki. You're right about that. Akimaru and I smelled two girls were here with the bandits when Naruto attacked them. Said Kiba with Akimaru barking in agreement. Okay that makes sense. Naruto would protect anyone from danger. Even strangers. Said Choji. The group nods their heads at that. Naruto is the type of person to help anyone who needed it no matter what. Strange, the girl's scents are familiar. Like I came across it before. Said Kiba. Really? Where? Asked Lee. I know this scent as well. I believe that I came across it during the Chunin exams months ago. Said Shino. Everyone is confused by that. Who could these girls be? Wait. What if it was that girl who attacked us during the exams? You know Satsuki, the girl from the sound team. Said Sakura. Oh yeah. But why would she be out here? Said Satsuki. At that moment a gasp of pain caught their attention. Oh, fuck. Fucking shit. Said a voice nearby. The group goes over to where the voice came from. They find one of the bandits was alive, but it seems not for long from the wounds he has on his body. The bandit then sees the Kanoha ninjas and groans. Oh great. More brats. The group then glares at the bandit. You don't look so good. Said Choji. No da fatso. I have a cut in my gut. Said the bandit. Shikamaru made to use his shadow technique to hold Choji back before he attacked the injured bandit. What happened to you? Asked Ino. I was minding my own business when me and my group was attacked by some blonde brat with two sabers. Liar. I know Naruto and he would never attack anyone without a reason. Said Satsuki. Well then cutie, you don't know your friend very well. The bandit regretted saying that when Satsuki activated her Sharingan and started to strangle the man. No one and I mean no one, but Naruto is allowed to call me that. Now tell us what really happened. Yelled Satsuki. Okay. Okay. Just let me go. Satsuki let go of his windpipe and turns off her Sharingan. Okay the group I was with had just attacked a caravan of merchants when we went into the woods to lay low. The group glare at the man. The bandit rolls his eyes. Yeah, yeah whatever not everyone can be ninjas ya know. Anyways, our group found two girls in the woods. One was injured and the other was helping her heal. I think you can guess what happens next. Yes, you tried to rape them. But our friend killed your group and saved them. Said Niji. Every one of the ninjas glared even harder at the vile man. Hey. What I do or who I do is my business. And I am not going to have a bunch of snot-nosed brats judge me for it. Said the bandit, who regretted saying that when Tenten threw a kunai just centimeters near his balls. Enough. Did you see anything else? Asked Shikamaru. No, I blacked out when your friend slashed me. What did the girls look like? Asked Shikamaru. The red head and a girl with long black hair with a ribbon tied in it. Also, the red head had a real mouth on her. She could out curse a sailor any day of the week. The entire group widened their eyes at that. Sakura, Satsuki along with teams 9 and 10, knew who the girl with black hair was but could not remember her name. Well those from the retrieval mission knew of the girl with red hair as one of Orochimaru's sound 5. But before they could ask any more questions, the bandits started to convulse. Ino and Sakura tried to save him with what little knowledge they gained from Tsunade, but unfortunately the bandit died from his wounds. Damn, sorry guys, but the wounds were too much for him. Said Ino. Yeah, I am surprised that he survived this long. Said Sakura. It's alright you too. Now let's go over what we know so far. Said Skikamaru. First is that Naruto finds out about the plans Jureya has for him. Said Niji. Second is that Naruto also finds out about his family being both alive and lied to about his status in the village. Said Shino. Third is that Naruto gets the idea in his head to stop being a Konoha shinobi and leave for an undisclosed amount of time to not only grow stronger but to protect us from those in the government who want him dead. Said Satsuki. Next he runs up here where he was a few months ago to escape and make it impossible to locate him. 
said Choji. And lastly he finds two of Orochimaru's subordinates out here in the woods about to be raped and saved them. Said Lee. But where did they go? It's not like they flew away. Said Tenten. Actually, I think they did. Said Kiba. The group looks at Kiba with confused eyes. What do you mean Kiba? Naruto and the girls can't fly. Said Choji. You're right they can't. But I smell three animals here. Two giant birds and what smells like a burning lizard. Said Kiba. Everyone sweat drops at that. Kiba, what are you talking about? There are no burning lizards and where would these big birds come from? Said Niji. Chikamaru then snapped his fingers. I know where. The summoning realm. It is the only place animals like that would come from. But Naruto-kun has the toads. So, how could he summon those animals? Asked Hinata. Naruto might have found another summon while Jiraiya wasn't looking. Said Sakura. And if what the letters Naruto gave us, he could have gotten them at any time. They are probable the reason Naruto found out what Jiraiya was going to do to him. They also must have helped him escape. Said Satsuki. So, what do we do now? There is no way we can catch up with animals who can fly. Naruto could be anywhere by now. Said Lee. Troublesome, we need to go back to Konoha. Naruto might have gone to an allied nation, most likely Spring. Said Shikamaru. The group nods their heads at that. Well they are upset that they could not find Naruto. They knew that they needed supplies for a long-term mission to find Naruto now. They gathered up the bandit remains for study and evidence to help find Naruto and where he might have gone. Konoha a few hours later. It has been a few minutes since Jiraiya stopped screaming in the Hokage's office. Now he is screaming in the T&I department courtesy of Anko. Turns out that Anko has a soft spot for the little ball of sunshine. Naruto had helped Anko out years ago when four men tried to take advantage of her when she was drunk one night. They became good friends after that. Now she was torturing the man that made the one person she considered her son to leave Konoha. Naruto had left her a letter as well, but she is still angry. But not at Naruto, but at those who made him leave. Anko would get every bit of information out of Jiraiya's head on way or another. Even if it's the last thing Jiraiya would ever do. The rookie Mina Sakura, who had gone to grab the records of the Chunin exams, had just arrived at the Hokage's office. Their parents were not there, so they assumed that they had gone home to prepare for the arrival of the Yuzumaki Namika's family. Report. Did you find Naruto? Asked Tsunade. No, Hokage-sama. We believe that Naruto has already left the Land of Fire. Answered Shikamaru. Sai, I see. Did you find anything that could help us find him? Asked Tsunade. We did find some bandit remains from what looks like a fight between them and Naruto. Answered Shikamaru. Tsunade raises an eyebrow at that. How can you be sure it was Naruto? Well for one, both Shino and Kiba confirmed that it was Naruto due to his scent. Plus, we found a bandit still alive and he said that him and his group were attacked by a blonde shinobi. Said Niji. Is this bandit with you? No, Sensei. He died before me and Sakura could heal him. Said Ino. I see. Where is Sakura anyways? Asked Tsunade. Right here Sensei. I went to go grab the records of the Chunin exams. Answered Sakura as she came out the door. And why do you need those records? Asked Tsunade. We found out that Naruto-kun had fought and killed the bandits because they were going to rape two girls. Thanks to both the bandits' description and also thanks to both Kiba and Shino, we now know that one of the girls was here in Konoha during the exams. Said Hanada. Really? Who was it? Asked Tsunade. Got it. Her name is Kintsuchi. She was the only Kanoichi on the sound team that Orochimaru sent during the exams. Said Sakura. She then gave her master the notes on kin to her. Hmm, that's strange. Says here that Orochimaru used her for a sacrifice to fight my sensei and that she is dead. Said Tsunade. Of course. Yelled Shikamaru. Everyone looks at him. Don't you guys remember? Orochimaru used the Ido Tensei to bring back the pervious Hokages to kill the Sandame. If Orochimaru intended Kin to be used as a sacrifice for the Jutsu, then it must have failed. But why would it fail? Asked Lee. Because, there is a Hokage that is not dead yet. The Ido Tensei can only bring back those who are dead, not the living. Said Shikamaru. The group finally understands what Shikamaru means. Orochimaru must have tried to bring back Minato during the invasion, but since Minato is alive and Orochimaru didn't know that, the Jutsu failed and Kin lived through it. But why was Kin and that girl from the Sound 5 out near the Valley of the End? Asked Tenten. If your boss tried to kill you would you go back? Plus, that other girl failed to bring Sasuke to Orochimaru, so he probably considered her a failure. Said Niji. Wait what do you mean? Naruto left with not one but two of Orochimaru's former subordinates. Asked Tsunade. Yes, and he probably convinced them to go with him, since he is not the type to leave people in danger. No matter who they might be. Said Shino. Great. Groaned out Tsunade. Did you find out where Naruto could have gone? We think he might have gone to spring. 
but we also think Naruto has a new summon, since there is proof of animals that don't belong in the land of fire flying away with Naruto and the girls. Said Skikamaru. Well you are right about the summons. After you left and when me and your parents were done beating Jiraiya into paste, I summoned the boss of the slugs and asked her to speak to the toads. Said Tsunade. What did the toads have to say about all of this? Asks Itsuki. Well for one they had no idea of what Jiraiya was up to. He even locked Minato out of summoning the toads. It's why they thought he was dead as well. Also, someone has removed Naruto off the toad summoning contract without the toad's permission. Said Tsunade. How is that possible? Asked Niji. The slugs and toads told me that even though they both are very powerful summons, they are mid tier level summons at best. Only a much more powerful summon can override another summon's contract. Answered Tsunade. Then Naruto found one. Great. Then he could be anywhere, and we would never find him unless he wants to be found. Said Satsuki. Unfortunately. Said Tsunade. So, what now? Asked Shoji. As much as I hate to say this. We can't do anything right now. The daimyo is coming tomorrow, and I need to explain what has happened. Hopefully we can keep Naruto out of the bingo book. And then Naruto's family is coming in a few days. Now I know that you guys might be angry, but remember, they all have been lied to for years as well. So, don't hate them for what was out of their hands. Said Tsunade. Oh, I won't hate them. I hate Jiraiya because of his stupidity. Fame and glory. That is why he did this. Fame and glory that people would forget in two years after it was over. Why couldn't he let Naruto have what is his right, and that is his family? Yelled Satsuki. I don't know what is going on in that head of his. Alright go home and rest. We will find a way to bring Naruto home. Dismissed. Said Tsunade. Hi. Said the rookies. After the rookies left the office, Tsunade then opened a drawer in her desk. From the drawer she pulls out Naruto's headband and license. Tsunade begins to cry again at the reminder of the one person she loves as a son. She failed to protect him once again. And it was a because of Jiraiya. Tsunade then puts the items back in the drawer. She then thinks back to everything that has happened in the last day. Her anger grows as she remembers, but she controls it for now. She needs to be ready for when the daimyo comes and the Namaka's family returns to Konoha. Tsunade no longer has any pity for when Kashina gets her hands on Jiraiya, for this is all his fault. Konoha three days later. The day seemed a lot darker than it should be. There were clouds covering the sky not letting any sunshine to come down from the heavens. Like the gods knew that something was going to happen. Tsunade had already spoken to the daimyo days ago about Naruto and Jiraiya. Over course the daimyo was pissed. Someone in his court had gone behind his back and caused a young man, who had done nothing to deserve this, pain and suffering on levels that no one should go through. He sent his guardian twelve ninjas back to the capital to find those responsible. But they found shock the daimyo to his core. It turns out that his oldest son had helped Jiraiya to do this. His reason? Greed. The daimyo's oldest had done this solely for more money. Jiraiya had promised untold wealth if he helped him. And so, the son helped Jiraiya. The son stole one of his father imperial stamps and made a fake scroll to fool Minato and his family into hiding. Currently the son is in the palace prisons for his crimes and will be punished when his father returns to the capital. Now we look to the south gate where a family of five are closing in on Konoha. Unaware of what they will find when they arrive. So, this is Konoha huh? Nice place. Said Naruko. It looks beautiful. I can't wait to live here. Said Natsumi. Yes, Konoha is a great place to live. I just hope that Naruto will understand why we had to leave him for so long. Said Minato. Don't worry Minato. If he is like any Uzumaki, he will no doubt punch you, then hug you with all his strength. I just can't wait to have him in my arms again. I wonder if he has a girlfriend yet. Said Kashina. Who knows? Maybe. He might even be in love with either Hitomi's or Makoto's daughter. Said Minato. Or maybe both. He would need multiple wives to help rebuild both of our clans you know. Said Kashina. Tuckle, yes, yes I know. We will talk to him about that in time. I just want to make a bond with him first and train him as well. Said Minato. Great idea. I could train him with the family sword styles. Said a happy Kashina. Hurry mommy, daddy. I want to meet my Ani chan Said Naruhi. Tuckle, calm down Naruhi-chan. Naruto is not going anywhere. Said Natsumi. Yeah it's not like his isn't in the village. Said Naruko. Well he might not be. He could be out on a mission. Said Minato. If that is the case then we will just have to wait until he gets back home. Said Kashina. Okay. Said a happy Naruhi. They finally reach the east gate when they are approached by the Anbu. Yandame Sama, it is good to see you again. Said the Anbu with a rhino mask. Thank you. But may I ask, how did you know we would be here? Asked Minato. I am afraid that Tsunade-sama has ordered me to not tell you sir. Said Rhino. 
Why not? asked Kashina. I am sorry, but Tsunade Sama will answer all your questions when you see her. Answered Rhino. The family nod their heads, but for Minato and Kashina, they can't help but wonder what is going on. The family was then shunshined to the Hokage's office. After they made it to the office, they see both the daimyo sitting in a chair next to the Hokage's desk and Tsunade sitting in the Hokage's chair. Hello Minato, Kashina welcome back to Konoha. Said the daimyo. Hello, daimyo-sama. Said Minato and Kashina. When their parents said that all three children followed suit and did the same. It is good to see you all after all this time. And hello to the three of you. I am Tsunade Senju, your godmother. Said Tsunade with a smile. The three children smiled right back at her. Now then, Minato, Kashina there is a lot to discuss, and what we are going to talk about is not for your children ears. So, if you don't mind. Said the daimyo. Getting the hint, Minato and Kashina made shadow clones and took their children to the Uzumaki compound. After the clones and the children left, Tsunade activated the silent seals in the room. Tsunade. What is going on? Asked Minato. Sai, Minato, Kashina what we are about to discuss is very important. So, please don't interrupt until the end. Said Tsunade. Tsunade. Can I ask where is Naruto? I would like to see him before we begin. Asked Kashina. I am afraid Naruto is what we will be discussing. Said Tsunade. Both parents got a very dark felling in their stomachs when she said that. Something has gone wrong they just know it. Uzumaki compound same time. So, this is our new home. Awesome. Said Naruko. Calm down Naruko. Let's unpack everything now so mom and dad don't have to later. Come on Naruhi help me get settled in okay. Said Natsumi. Okay Natsumi Onichin. Come on Naruko Onichin I bet I can finish before you. Said Naruhi. You're on. Shouted Naruko. After an hour of putting things away, the girls were almost done. It was at this point Naruko found something. She found a letter in the family office. It was addressed to the family as a whole. Naruko picked up the letter and opened it. After reading it she began to cry. Hearing their sister crying, both Natsumi and Naruhi came running in to find out what happened. Naruko what is wrong? Are you hurt? Asked Natsumi. Not trusting her voice, Naruko handed Natsumi the letter. Naruko then went over and hugged Naruhi for comfort. Itsumi then read the letter and began to cry as well. She then got up and turned to her sisters. You both need to stay here. Mom and dad need to see this letter. Said Natsumi with tears in her eyes. Naruhi tried to ask what is wrong, but Natsumi ran out of the house. Naruhi the looked to her other sister and asked. Naruko what happened? Naruko looked at her little sister and said. Naruto and Aichin is not coming home Naruhi. Not for a very long time. Both sisters began to cry with each other. The brother that they wanted to meet is not here, and he won't be for a long, long time. Okage's office. The killing intent was permeating around the building. Minato and Kashina had just been told of everything that has happened to their son. And they are not happy, not one bit. Attacked, beaten, poisoned, drowned and other horrible things done to him for no reason other than because of something not of his choice. Minato has never felt like such a failure then right now. He trusted both his sensei and his village, and they both betrayed him. Kashina looked like she was ready to kill half the village. Her hair acting like the Kayubi's nine tails and her chains coming out of her back ready to kill a lot of people. But before both parents could go on a rampage, the door to the office swung open to reveal an out-of-breath Natsumi in the doorway. Natsumi. What is wrong? Are you okay? Asked Kashina who went over to her daughter to make sure she was alright. Naruto. Naruto he. Natsumi tried to say. Natsumi, calmed in breath. Said Minato. After she calmed down Minato spoke again. There that's better. Now, what about Naruto? He is gone. He left a letter in the house. Said Natsumi. She then gave her parents the letter. Naruko found it while we were putting things away. I brought it over as quickly as I could. Minato then takes the letter. Thank you Natsumi. Please go back home and keep an eye on your sisters. Natsumi nods to her father and then left. Minato then begins to read the letter out loud so everyone in the room could hear. Dear family. If you are reading this letter, then it means that you have returned to Konoha. By the time you read this I will have left the village. For most of my life I have been alone. I have had more assassination attempts on my life than all Hokages combined in one year alone. I have had to sleep with one eye open at night. My birthday, the one day every child is supposed to look forward to, is the day I fear the most due to the fox hunts that happen every year. Most restaurants throw me out, and most stores sell me outdated or broken goods for three times the price of regular goods. But even with all of this, Kanoha is still my home. The reason. The friends I have made here. They became the light in my life. That light saved me more times than I can count. But now that light is being threatened. 
I found out through my summons that Jiraiya plans to have me kill my fellow Jinchurikis around the nations. He also plans to use Naruko and Natsumi as a means to conquer the other hidden villages, to make Kanoha the superpower he thinks it is meant to be. Because of this, I know that I cannot stay in Kanoha and protect both myself and my friends. So, it comes with a heavy heart that I must do this. I must leave Kanoha and become stronger to not only to protect everyone I love, but also my fellow Jinchiriki. I must stay away from Kanoha for a long time. I know that this will break many hearts, but it must be done. Dusan, Ka-san know this, I do not blame you for what has happened to me. I know that you would never have let this happen if you knew. I may have only known you for just a day, but I love both of you and my sisters with all of my heart and soul. I promise that I will come back one day. And I always keep my promises, for that is my ninja way. Love, Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. P.S. Thank you for the ramen. It was delicious. After Minato had finished everyone in the room was crying. Minato was holding the letter so hard he almost ripped it in half. The only reason he didn't was because this is the only letter he has from his son. He then rereads the last line. Zen. Zen is Naruto. Said Minato. Minato. Who is Zen? Asked Tsunade. A few days ago, we had a guest in our home we had in the village we hid in. He called himself Zen. It was thanks to him we decided to come home. Answered Minato. It was at this moment, Kishina stood up. She then walked towards the door. Kishina. Where are you going? Asked Tsunade. The vent some frustration on a pervert. Snarled Kishina. Very well. He is in the tea and I department. The last room of the building. Just keep him alive Kishina. Said Tsunade. Why? Kishina growled out. We need him to find those who helped him. Plus, as much as I hate to admit it, we need him to find Naruto. Said Tsunade. Kishina thinks it over for a moment and then speaks. Fine. I won't kill him, but I will make him wish he was dead. After she left the room, Tsunade looked to Minato. Are you not going with her? Minato shook his head. No, she needs this. Plus, I blame myself for what has happened to Naruto. I don't deserve to punish Jiraiya. I should have known that he would do this. He had been obsessed with the prophecy for years. And when he heard about Kishina being pregnant, he tried to convince me to transfer the Kayubi into my children when they were born. But I refused. Then he told the masked man where Kishina was giving birth. He then let out the Kayubi and forced you to seal it into your children. Said the daimyo. Yes. I have been such a fool. I never deserved that hat. And I don't deserve it now. Said Minato. No, Minato you do deserve it. It's those that have pissed on your legacy that don't deserve you. But you are needed to wear this hat if we are to get rid of those who have harmed your son. Will you take the hat back Minato? Or will you let those who hurt Naruto win? Asked Tsunade. Minato looked into the eyes of both Tsunade and the daimyo. They both awaited his answer. With newfound determination, Minato answered. I will do it. I will take up the mantle of Hokage once again. And I do it not for those who have hurt my son, but for those who have helped my son and for Naruto. So that when he is ready to come home, it will be a home for him to live in peace. Tsunade and the daimyo nod their heads at that. Tsunade then takes off the hat and robes of the Hokage and gives them to Minato. Minato then puts them on. Welcome back, Yandame sama Said Tsunade. Thank you Tsunade. I swear I will fix this village. No matter what. I promise. To you and to Naruto, wherever he may be. Said Minato. T and I department. In the dark halls of the T and I department, we find a very angry Kashina stalking down the halls. She was here for one person. That person is Jiraiya the Sanin, the super pervert, the Toad Saga and the godfather to her son. But those fancy titles mean nothing to her right now. Right now, Jiraiya is one thing in her mind. He is the one who took her baby away from her. Because of him, her child was forced to grow up before he should have. Because of him, Naruto was afraid of his own birthday. Because of him, Naruto is forever scarred both physically and mentally. Naruto has denied a normal childhood, all because Jiraiya wanted his 15 minutes of fame. Jiraiya broke not only her trust, but the trust of his own student, her husband. Not to mention the village. But that is not why she is here. Most of the village can go fuck themselves for all she cared. No, she was here for her pound of flesh, and Jiraiya was going to pay it in full. As Kashina walked, she came across two people. These people are Anko and Ibiki. Two of the best operatives of T and I. Kashina. Said Anko. Kashina was Anko sensei at one time. It was one of the reasons why she looked after Naruto as well. Seeing her after all this time, Anko wanted nothing more than to hug her, but the anger rolling off her frightened Anko greatly. Kashina looked at Anko. Hello Anko-chan. I am sorry but I cannot catch up right now. Ibiki where is Jiraiya? He is down this hall in the center cell. He has two Anbu agents watching him right now. Answered Ibiki. Kashina nodded her head at him. Thank you Ibiki. 
She then walked right past the both of them. But before she left, she spoke to Anko. Anko-chan, thank you for looking after my son. It means a lot to me. She said with a smile. Anko smiled right back at her. You're welcome, sensei. Ashina then continued down the halls. I don't envy Jirei right now. Said Ibiki. My only regret right now is that I can't witness what she is going to do to him. I will tell you this Ibiki, I saw Naruto as a son for the longest time. And because of Jiraiya, Naruto is gone, and we don't know where he is. Said Anko. I know Anko. But he did promise that he would come home again. And you know his ninja way. Said a smirking Ibiki. Anko smirked right back. Yeah. He keeps his promise. No matter what. Few minutes later. Play Star Wars Darth Sidious theme. Ashina walked towards the cell Jiraiya was in. Like Ibiki said, it was the last one down the hall in the center with two Anbu agents guarding it. She walks up to the cell. She then speaks to the Anbu. Leave us. The Anbu look at her for a moment and then nodded at her. They unlock the door and walk away. They did not want to be here for this. Ashina then walked into the cell. When she was in, she slammed the door hard, waking up the pervert inside. The slamming of the door got Jiraiya's attention. He looked like he was thrown into a blender twice, then allowed to heal and finally beaten by an army of wrestlers. He had never felt so much pain in his life. He looked up and saw Kashina standing near the door. When he saw her, he knew why C was here. So, you have come for your pound of flesh, haven't you? Asked Jiraiya as he breathed heavily. You know the answer to that. Kashina snarled out. Why are you doing this? You only knew Naruto for a day, so why do this? You shouldn't have any love for him damn it. Then you never really knew me or Minato. We both lost our parents when we were young. Me when Yuzushio was attacked and Minato when he was born. We both swore we would love all of our children no matter what. We swore that we would be there for them no matter what path they chose in their life. And because of you our son has been through hell for a thousand people. Shouted Kishina. It had to be done. You of all people should understand me. You had the Kayubi sealed inside of you. You of all people know that the Biju can't be controlled in any way. You should want them dead more than me. No. I lived with the Kayubi all my life, but not even once did I want the beast dead. The Biju are a part of the world. To remove them would hurt everyone, including you. No. The Biju are monsters and monsters need to be killed. And my son has to die in order for that to happen. For the greater good. Absolutely. If one person has to die for others to live their lives, then yes. Naruto is going to die so that the threat of the Biju ends forever. And when Naruko and Natsumi help destroy the other hidden villages, then Konoha will reign supreme for all time. Raved Jiraiya. Ashina growls at that. First her baby boy and now her little angels. No more. While she promised she would not kill Jiraiya, she didn't promise that he would come out of this in one piece. Ashina then took out a knife from behind her. Jiraiya. She said lowly. This scared Jiraiya greatly. You took made my son leave his home to protect not only himself but his friends as well. Now you threaten to use my daughters as weapons. No more. She looked into Jiraiya's eyes as her eyes turned soul burning red. You said I am here for a pound of flesh. You are wrong. Jiraiya started to quiver in fear. Kishina then spoke in a dark demonic voice. I don't want a pound of flesh. I want. All. Of. Your. Flesh. Jiraiya's screams could be heard throughout the land of fire. This was the day that everyone learned what happens if you hurt the child of an Uzumaki. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.